Um, um, excuse me, excuse me. I'm, I'm really glad you guys are enjoying Sea Turtle Cove and you're coming to investigate the wildlife, but, and I know you're a little bored, but these rocks could be slightly dangerous and this is, this is restricted beach area. Could you please, could you please go back over to the, um, the boardwalk? That's where, thank you, thank you ladies. Please resume, resume walking towards the boardwalk. That's where, that's where you guys need to be. And oh gosh, oh my goodness. Ma'am, excuse me. Ma'am, we don't have a lifeguard on duty yet, so I'm I'm really quite concerned. I think that 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 might be a little bit dangerous. I don't think there's anything dangerous in the waters yet, but uh, your head appears to you already okay. Now your head's back on your shoulders. All right. Well, as long as that's good. Okay then. Oh my goodness. Hello everyone. Hello and welcome back to Sea Turtle Cove. This is our beautiful cove where we are in charge of taking care of hopefully quite a few sea turtles. We are trying to clean this place up. We've been cleaning up the pollution. We've been cleaning up all the litter. We've been getting the place set up. Hello ma'am. Set up with all sorts of kelp forest. Excuse me ma'am. That's not that's not towards the boardwalk. You're supposed to. Oh my gosh. Well hello. Hello child. Um pardon me. This isn't this isn't this is this is not Okay, the guests are still starving, and they still are not having anywhere to sit, so it seems like they're wandering all over the place, but uh, but yes, this is the park that we are in charge of. It is a public park, and we are trying to bring it up to five stars on ratings so that we can keep our funding. We get quite a bit of funding, and you guys get to vote every episode on how we spend that funding and try to improve the cove, as long as we try to strive towards getting those five stars and meet the goal the eventual goal of this entire challenge of having at least 100 baby sea turtles hatched here at this beach. So those are our two really big goals and we've been doing all sorts of things like cleaning up the beach and adding in a coral reef and adding in the big kelp forest and trying to take care of the guests just so that they will hopefully not damage the beach but they're still keeping us on our toes. So there's been a lot of improvements and we're going to be adding even more improvements today. So let me go ahead and show you guys what's been going on. As you can see there is somebody new so let's go over and check out the new ones you guys actually voted last time for us to block off the little cove way over there you can kind of see the benches from here way in fact if i zoom in with my camera sorry if it's a little laggy it's an old camera there we go if you see where that biologist oh gosh all of it just came into view all of a sudden but if you see where those two biologists are hanging out we have actually received permission thanks to the thing that you guys voted on to go over there and we're going to block off that little area so that it'll be a safe place for shorebirds so that's going to be our project today but the biologists have been telling me they think there's a few new creatures in the water and i'm hoping we might see something interesting but they've also been telling me that there's something wrong with the kelp forest so we're gonna go check that out but we're gonna go check out these new residents first so these guys flew over possibly because all of the fish that are showing up at the coral reef have started to kind of uh, multiply the fish population at the coral reef seems to be doing very well so we'll see a lot more fish eaters showing up pretty soon including these guys look at you look at you little pelicans look at you guys hi oh my gosh look at him He's so cute. Look at him. Look at him. He's just he's just eating those fish. Oh my gosh, he's so big. <gasps> Look at him snooze. They're so cute. All right, so these are some pelicans. Apparently, it's two males and a female who have just showed up, and they have been eating the fish that have been uh, wandering up, like getting washed up on the beach edge. So they seem to be settling in pretty well. They are pretty migratory. As you guys know, pelicans just sort of travel wherever the food is, and they stay along the coast normally, where it's nice and warm. And these ones seem to be settling in pretty well, so the biologists are pleased to see them, because it means that we have a pretty healthy fish population. If they're able to find some food and even play with some fish that they pull out of the water, oh gosh, and the guests are just wandering all over the place. And so that means the coral reef is doing pretty good. Let's see if we can get to the drop-off point and go check on it. All right, you ready for this? Pew. Woo! You're a big fish! Oh goodness, there's some big fish all right. So it looks like there's some big fish. There's some jellyfish swimming around. The guests are apparently still starving. Oh, look, it's one of the tangs! Beautiful! Look at this! Oh, look, and you can even see... Oh my gosh, there's another big fish. All right, up, 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 up. 
<gasps> Whoa, into the fish ball. All right. So you can see there's even the fish balls. So it seems like we're getting a lot more fish showing up in our coral reef, which is really great. Even if the coral reef doesn't get too much bigger, because it does take a very, very, very long time for coral reefs to grow. But even if it doesn't get too much bigger, yeah, look at this. There's another fish ball. There's fish showing up everywhere. And where there's fish, there's going to be things like other fish or other creatures coming to eat the fish. So hopefully we'll see something new over here soon. Coming and checking out the coral reef. In fact, we should probably uh, kind of check along, check along the rocks. So we'll come scuba diving here now and then, and we'll see if we find anything hiding inside of the coral reef. But other than our project for the birds today, since you guys informed me through the voting, you guys voted to spend our research grant money this time around on taking care of the birds. Oh gosh, there we go. All right, well, apparently the water was a little dirty here. Mm, I don't see anything. Interesting. But you guys have voted for the birds, so we are going to defend that edge of the beach for the birds. But I have also been told by our biologist that there are some big problems uh, over in the kelp forest. Or at least they're worried there may be a big problem. Because the kelp forests have been doing really, really well. Well enough that I'm hoping it will attract some of our sea seaweed eaters. I'm keeping my eyes out for flippers, because there, there may have been a turtle sighting, but I don't know if it was just... You know, like a tire in the water. There! There's the problem! All right, my friends. These are sea urchins, and they have come up to the edge of our kelp forest, and this may actually cause a huge problem. So the kelp forest is doing great, and the algae is absolutely blooming in a good way. Not too much of an algae bloom. Over in our coral cove. Oh, there goes another fish. I've been told to keep my eyes peeled for, like, splashing flippers. They th Somebody thinks they saw a flipper splash, but I'm not sure what kind of creature they may have been indicating. Hmm. But, yeah, so we are having a problem with sea urchins. Now, sea urchins are a normal part of a beach ecosystem, but they do like to eat a lot of seaweed. And if there's no predators for sea urchins, then sometimes they can eat so much of the kelp forest, they can eat all of the algae and all of the kelp and leave what's called an urchin barren. Too much of a good thing, basically. Sea urchins are really cute, in my opinion. They're very prickly. Their name actually comes from, like, sea hedgehog, which is a very old form of their name, and I think that's just amazing. Amazing. Sea hedgehogs! But they could eat this entire thing. And that actually happened in California, where these beautiful kelp forests were completely destroyed because the sea urchins had no predators. The predators of the sea urchin are especially like the uh, eel, wolf eel, and the otter. And when the sea otter was actually uh, harvested for its fur, and then when the killer whales ran out of food, so they started eating sea otters, the sea otter population plummeted, and the sea urchin population skyrocketed. And the more sea urchins you have, the more kelp they're going to eat. The more kelp they eat, the more it looks like this an empty barren, what becomes known as an urchin barren. And if we don't have any kelp, we can't feed any of our sea turtles or manatees or anything else that wants to show up and eat kelp too. So we need to think about what to do. Now, they are a normal, healthy part of an ecosystem and things like sea otters, oh gosh, look how many there are though. Things like sea otters and sharks and crabs and gulls will actually eat sea urchins. So do we want to leave the sea urchins alone? Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. Look at this, it looks like there are already kind of breaking inside of the kelp forest, but do we want to leave them alone and see if the sea urchin population ends up balancing out because we'll have some predators move in to eat them? So we do, want to, do we want to wait and see if predators naturally come in to start eating these guys? Or are we worried it's going to start looking more and more like that? And do we want to step in and try managing the sea urchin population ourselves? But if we spend the time and the money with our research, like money going towards that instead of adding in sea turtles, are we just going to get further behind our goals? And are the guests going to get more and more out of hand? There's so many questions. There's so many choices. All right. So the sea urchins are a huge issue. And the sea urchins are, are kind of like they're adorable and I think they're awesome, but they can really, they can cause a lot of problems. And I didn't see any splash and flippers, but we're going to keep our eyes peeled because I was told that some of our biologists had their binoculars out and they saw splashing flippers. Hey, what's that? Is that just a little, hmm. So we might want to do some scuba diving and checking for new creatures. Uh, mostly I'm just seeing a lot of fish. Hello fish, big, big fish, big fish with big silly faces. 
Hmm. Anybody down here? Anybody over here? So, no sightings yet. This is prime sea turtle territory, though, so hopefully we'll start seeing sea turtles. And speaking of sea turtles, there's positive news about sea turtles. Apparently, this is a record-breaking year for nest in Florida. <gasps> what? Sea turtle! <laughs> Just as we were talking about it, here's a sea turtle. You guys, we're going to have to start naming the sea turtle. Oh man, if you guys share like one of your favorite memories of the ocean or the sea or water, if you don't live anywhere near it, like a lake or a pool even, then you can go ahead and leave that suggestion or leave like a suggestion for a name and leave what you love about the sea, like something you love about the nature, the natural aspects of the sea or about like any of the waterways that you might live. Like I saw some wild river otters actually the other day in my own backyard and I just about freaked out. In fact, I did freak out it was amazing but here we go so all right are you a female are you what, what are you what are we looking at here our biologist did see something all right so this is a female green sea turtle and she is headed into the water so slow but she's 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 going she's working her way in there so ah oh, this is so cool what does she need let's look over her needs again so she needs a clam bubbler to enrich her. So she needs to play around the coral reef. So we might want to build some more little coral reefs that she can play around in, or at least encourage the growth of clams and crustaceans. So there's that. And then she needs to eat seaweed. So it looks like she's headed straight for the kelp forest where there's plenty of seaweed to be had. And then, ah, she does need a kelp bed as her home. So we'll have to see. That's a good question. If we leave these sea urchins alone, you can see where they've started to make some damage in here. Then will the kelp forest, it's this big right now, will it be able to sustain that and predators will move in to get rid of the sea urchins? Or do we need to kind of kick it up and step in and defend the kelp forest so that it can continue to grow and we don't have to worry about like adding more to it? Or should we just vote on adding more in and letting the sea urchins continuing to prosper in the hopes that maybe something like otters or crabs or uh, anything else like seagulls that might eat the sea urchins will show up. So, hmm. But we do need the kelp forest to continue to grow a little more so it can provide shelter for our green sea turtle. So we do have one. Is that her down there? No, this is the carcass of a thornback ray. Apparently there's like carcasses of things in the water. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to attract somebody. All right, so there's that to consider, you guys. So it looks like we have at least one female green sea turtle. And I don't know if we have a male somewhere in the water, so we'll have to see. Should we should we have our biologist focus on the green sea turtle and try to take care of them? Also, can't reach the paradise trash can. We'll have to help out with that at some point. So should we put our research funds into focusing on the sea turtle instead? That's a good question. Hmm. We're going to have to look into that. And don't forget, we usually have... Is that another sea turtle? Is that another sea turtle? We usually have bonuses. So, nope, that's that's a fish. So, however many likes you uh, leave will actually affect what gets added in as the secondary choice. So, our second choice for the straw polls is always going to be given a bit of a boost and a bonus. Like, say, the green sea turtles potentially showing up because of how many likes you left. So there were 300 likes left last time and green sea turtles were the second choice. So it seems like some have shown up in our zoo. So, hmm, our zoo, our, our park. I'm so used to running a zoo, but this is just like a reserve, like a marine reserve. All right, so enough dilly-dallying and babbling about all of that stuff. You guys know how the system works by now on how to vote and how to make sure that we can add plenty of things into this world. So it's time to get to work on our current project today. And that is actually going to be, pardon me, biologist Elizabeth, pardon me, biologist Darby. That is going to be turning this area into a bit of a shorebird sanctuary. So that means that it is not going to allow, there we go. Nope, 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 nope. I need this bench. We're no longer going to allow people to work their way down onto this part of the beach. Oh, look, and it looks like little crabs are starting to like little, um, you know, those little the sea clams and things like that that live along the coast are starting to show up. Hopefully that'll attract something too. So this is going to be turned into a seabird area and we get to block it off with a fence and a gate and make sure that nobody wanders down over here. But we also get to add in some new plants to try to encourage some of the seabirds to come in. And we also get to add in just a few things to see if we can encourage some crustaceans. Oh, look, and it looks like coral is starting to grow up these rock formations. Nice. So we get to add in a few things off the coast to see if we can try to encourage shorebirds to move in over here. 
So first things first though, let's go ahead and block this area off. We want to put in a gate and a fence so that people can still see the shorebirds. In fact, in the future, if we put in a like pair of binoculars for them to look in, I bet they'd be really happy. So we could add more guest educational facilities and put in some binoculars. There's just so many choices. So many choices, almost too many. All right, and let's see. And that's why it's so fun to leave it in your guys' hands to figure out what to do next. Uh, there's the high rope fence. I wonder what kind of fence would be good to use over here. Now, this rope fence is pretty darn nice looking. I think we're going to use this rope fence, actually. Ah, hey, where are you coming, lady? All right, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the rope fence right about here. And I think that's as far as we can install it. And we'll just have to, like... Encourage people not to come this way with like a, um, a rock or something. All right, and then we can put in a gate for our keepers. And then, let's see. We are allowed, actually, to put down a few plants to try to encourage those shorebirds, because it's what you guys voted on. And we're also allowed to put down some rocks or something uh, along the edges here to try to prevent people <laughs> from walking over here. Okay, I'm gonna have to do it this way then. All right, come here, come here, come here. All right, come here, rope fence. Ooh, we almost had that one. Darn. All right, it won't go there, but we can come over here. Can I put it down this way? Maybe, maybe, no. Okay, can't put it down there. That's fine. So what we'll do, if I can put something over here, is maybe just put like a giant rock on this side. Wow. Wow, well, I can put that there. All right, basically, we're just going to have to hope people will get the idea. So maybe if I can stick a gigantic rock on this side. Oh, people are so miserable because they can't sit down. They can't do anything. Aha, that's what I need. Gigantic rock. Aha, there we go. And then I just need to figure out how to get the gigantic rock just right there. That's what we need. And now if I can just get another gigantic rock just right. There we go. That should hopefully prevent people from trying to wander over there. Wonderful. So, and he's just sitting on thin air. Okay, that's fine. Wow, he's eating that skewer, all right. Just sitting on thin air. Well, then we can add in some plants. So there's sea buckthorn. And there's sea rocket and the marum grass. And all of these were picked by our biologist as potential things that birds could use as places to hide or as nesting sites. And a lot of the birds that come to the shore actually prefer nesting in flat open areas, but they do sometimes nest in like little patches of grass or they like to hide in little patches of grass. So we have permission to put down just a few patches here and there to try to encourage them to come and nest over here and to kind of make the area look a little bit nicer. But really not a lot of grass, not a lot of plants tend to grow like right up along the open shore of the coast. So we probably won't have too many. There we go. Just a few scattered here and there with a few sea rockets mixed in. Look at all that water, how exciting. So you guys, should we vote on adding in sea turtles and then seeing if we can get our hands on a male? Because if we had a male, then he might meet the female. And if that happens, we might actually have some nests. Because that is the main goal of this area. I don't know how long they'll continue to give us funding if we don't actually have sea turtles having babies. And we do need to name the sea turtles. So we have at least one. And I'll start collecting a list of sea turtle names. So like I said, mention something that you love about the sea. And then a sea turtle name. And I'll write it down. Alright. And then we have a lot of the sea buckthorn. I can put down tons of it. Can't really, I want to decorate over here with this, but we weren't really given funds to do landscaping projects. We were just given funds to do a tiny bit of, uh, not too much more, like just a teensy bit of plant putting down. There we go. For the birds over here. And I think maybe one more this way. But that's just mostly to help have an area where the insects would be very abundant, like hiding in the plants. There we go. So other than the pelicans who showed up, and other than the woodpeckers, which are rapidly reproducing over on the other side, the woodpeckers are having a grand old time way over here because there's so many different plants. In fact, let's grab some of these plants. They're very nice. So many different plants to help them. There we go. Maybe we can just like put one or two of these in. Dun dun dun, or even a tree. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we could attract like some of the, maybe I'll grab like one or two bigger trees, just a couple. And we'll see if we attract some of the birds that like living up in the tall trees. So it, we may get shorebirds, we may get some other types of birds. For now we have pelicans, but pelicans are pretty darn forgiving 
about the way land looks. <laughs> you can usually find pelicans even like at dumps. They don't mind. As long as there's food to eat, then pelicans will tend to show up. If our pelicans will end up having babies or not, who knows? All right, let me come put down. There we go. All right, for the birds. And we'll see, we'll see if this attracts anybody. In fact, we'll remove this little palm tree right there. There we go, we'll remove those couple. All right, there we go. So we'll leave it like this. And this is to hopefully encourage shorebirds to show up. And then we're also allowed to come over here and actually, oh, look at all the mess. People are really starting, what are you doing over here, pelicans? Oh no. Oh, we're allowed to put down like some of the wood pathing because we want people to come and listen to the educator who is trying to teach them about the shorebirds and how important they are. All right, is this the right one? No, is this the right one? No. I have to go down my my huge list of, there we go, of wooden paths. So we are allowed to go ahead and like build a little path out to this education station. I don't know why the pelicans are hanging out over here. That's not such a good thing. Oh gosh, but there we go. So we now have the shorebird area set up. We have a problem with sea urchins and we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. But we do have at least one positive female sea turtle spotting. So there's that to consider. All right, so there's that. And then as you can see, our guests are very bored lately. So they've actually been causing a lot of problems, throwing parties, there is more beach balls. They've started to like play in the water. So there's all sorts of these tiny dangerous plastic balls that are showing up because kids are bringing toys to the beach to play with. As you can see, they're swimming in the water because they're so bored. They brought more little like beach toys that they're just tossing in here. So we do have some problems. Look at this, throwing parties. We don't really have like picnics or food or rubbish that we have to worry about anymore. But we are ending up with they are so bored and taking their education in their own hands that we have all of these balls and these toys popping up all over the place. Uh, oh, look, the white pelican is now pregnant. We just got an alert. Okay. Well, hi, Bubbly. We just got an alert from our uh, <laughs> from our biologist. So the pelicans are expecting. I don't know if we should get them off of the pier or not. That's kind of something we'll have to wonder about. But whew, all right, well, we actually had quite the advancement with this new seabird area. And I think we might even be able, in fact, let's do this. I think because this was all about getting the shorebird area set up, we are probably going to be allowed to put in one of the educational items for them. So like, hmm, I think maybe a pair of binoculars. So our first pair of binoculars, so that people will be able to look for shorebird sightings. So let me see if I can find, well, or where have my binoculars gone? I bet they're over here and I'm looking in the wrong spot. Let's see, playground, tour objects, canopies, donation boxes. Um, I just want my binoculars. There's the donation boxes. We could always set up a donation box to see how things are going there. Aha, there are the binoculars, all right. So we'll add in a set of paradise binoculars and we can go ahead and put those. I think the guests would be able to see from over here. All right, let's put those over there. And then we can even put down like a little wood pathing like so, like so, there we go. And then let me see, wood pathing. We'll do this and then we'll come back over. I can put them back down, there we go. See buckthorn, like so. All right, there we are. Woo, I made some splashes. All right, enough dilly-dallying. The power is in your ha guys' hands now. We have a little tiny shorebird area set up, so hopefully the shorebirds will start arriving. We have to make it as attractive as possible to them, but we have biologists on duty to take care of them if they show up over here. We do have the sea urchin problem, but we also have a female positive sighting of at least one female green sea turtle. So we could add in more sea turtles and see if we could get our hands on the male. Every time we add in a sea turtle, we're just gonna to like roll a dice so it would be kind of interesting to see what gender it's going to be and our coral reef is growing and having more fish and there's carcasses of fish starting to float in the water so i wonder if there's something uh a little bit more of a meaty meat eater who's starting to swim around in there and if that's the case do we really need to get a lifeguard if we get a lifeguard we can keep the people either out of the water or in a safely contained zone in the water so hmm all right, the power is in your guys' hands. Make sure you guys vote and give suggestions on other things we could potentially do here in our coral or in our sea turtle cove. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.